So Brelion is a Silicon Valley based startup that is pioneering an entirely new category of immersive display technology. Uh, so um, we are rolling out a number of new products, which are large format displays in a very compact form factor, which allow a lot of different medical applications. Do you want me to kick All off? right, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I'm just already engrossed looking at that graphic that's coming up on your presentation. Yeah, I believe you. Yep, let's go. Awesome. Looking so at our two main products, Ultra Reality on the left and Ultra Reality Mini on the right, um, are, are what we're featuring today. Um, Ultra Reality is a 122 inch virtual image viewable through a 30 inch viewing window. And then our smaller version, Ultra Reality Mini, or UR Mini for short, features a 40 inch virtual image through a 14 inch aperture for especially space constrained environments. And today we'll talk about a number of different medical applications ranging from virtual ICU to medical imaging and review, endoscopy, in-room cinema or in-hospital room cinema, MRI in-bore cinema, and robotic assisted surgery. And I'll get into a little bit of detail on each of those. Uh, but to answer your question a little bit more about Brelion and our background, we're an MIT spinoff uh, backed by Lockheed Martin and LG, as well as a number of other strategic and financial investors. And we're based in San Mateo, just outside of San Francisco. We have a secondary office in Taiwan where we do our manufacturing and assembly. And then we have customers, distributors, and showcase sites around the globe. So a worldwide presence at this point. We've won a number of awards for our technology uh, from the optics and photonics community, uh, the Optico Award, SBIE, and Society of Information Display Technology Award. Um, the origin story of our technology, our, our CEO and founder uh, was studying at MI MIT, studying imaging, and had a similar idea based on those principles to apply to display technology. And so we unveiled our technology on the TEDx stage a few years ago, um, where we uh, visualized a proof of concept of six discrete layers of depth in a single interface. As you can see here, the camera's refocusing between the front layer and the back layer as each of those images are on different depth planes, all within a single display. And the way we view the future of immersive visualization is you really need to hit three key attributes, comfort, performance, and immersion itself. Uh, VR headsets give you immersion, but not really comfort and performance. Conventional monitors can give you comfort and performance, but are lacking in terms of immersion. And so at the end of the day, we think most use cases will continue to be accessed through, through non-headset uh, based platforms. And so we're positioned somewhere between conventional monitors and VR headsets, again, offering comfort, performance, and immersion in a single device. So first, we'll talk a little bit in detail about ultra reality. Again, this is that large format display that features a 10 foot screen through a 30 inch viewing window, kind of like IMAX on your desk. And the smaller version is a 40 inch virtual image through a 14 inch aperture. And uh, as you can see here, it gives you sort of a panoramic effect that wraps around you and immerses you, but doesn't isolate you the way a VR headset might. And the experience is like looking through a window. So instead of looking at your display as you would a conventional display, you look through the display. And when you look through it, you see a much larger screen on the other side that again wraps around you and gives you that large format experience. Uh, so in terms of the key attributes of our technology, it's a 110 degree field of view in a compact form factor about the size of a 30 inch monitor. It's plug and play with HDMI or DisplayPort, so there's no software or content bottleneck. It'll work seamlessly with your existing systems, content and software. And the image depth and curvature, the image depth being 1.4 to 2.5 meters away, and the curvature matching the horopter or the, the curvature of the human eye, uh, is much more comfortable on the eye, leads to less eye fatigue and eye strain over prolonged use. In terms of spec, we can outperform standard 32 inch 4K monitors. Uh, with respect to brightness, we enhance the brightness uh, by directing the photons towards the user. We control the directionality of the light. Resolution, our current units are 4K. We have architectures that go to 5K, 8K, all the way up to 12K. Field of view again is 110 degrees. We can go up to 155 degrees. The image size is 122 inches. We can go up to 300 inches. 
And there's also a pretty significant power savings relative to comparably sized multi-monitor setups, about a 7x decrease in power consumption. So there's a sustainability aspect to our displays as well. So in terms of how it works, uh, there are a couple of principles that are worth met mentioning. The first is depth modulation, where we push the image far away from, from the viewer into virtual space without any image degradation. Um, and the second is what we call light field expansion, which is distributing pixels in virtual space to give you that panoramic kind of experience. To dig a little bit deeper, with depth modulation, we're able to give you an image across the field of view uh, that's pristine and without any optical aberration. And with respect to light field expansion, again, we're, we're positioning those pixels in virtual space uh, curved to match the horopter of the human eye, so much more comfortable viewing ex experience over extended use. You might be thinking, how does this differ from standard uh, 3D stereoscopic display. So some of the disadvantages of, of 3D um, displays is you have accommodation vergence mismatch, which means your eyes are focused on a plane that is not uh, corresponding with the image you're seeing. So you go to a movie theater, your eyes are, are physically focused on the screen, uh, but the images may be coming out from you and that disconnect is what leads to nausea and, and discomfort. Uh, it also has significant artifacts and a very narrow viewing zone. And of course, it requires glasses. Um, Brelion uh, offers true optical depth. It's monocular depth, so your eye is actually focused on the depth plane you're viewing. Uh, zero artifacts and a very wide viewing zone. And again, doesn't require any glasses. It's a glasses-free technology. There are other methods to achieve auto stereoscopic 3D or 3D without glasses using lenticular, lenticular screens and such, um, but they have limitations, um, limited zone, uh, viewing zone and uh, doubling artifacts, uh, shallow depth relative to what we're able to do with deep depth um, and, and um, haze artifacts. Uh, Brelion technology again offers true monocular depth an infinite viewable distance, no doubling artifacts or discomfort, and no head tracking or eye tracking required. Uh, minimal computation. So this is just to, to summarize the competitive landscape. Um, as you can see, Brelion outperforms our competitors in almost every metric. Um, and with respect to cost, we're continuing to drive our costs down um, as we continue to scale. And, and one sort of um, point of reference in the automotive industry, our, our technology is estimated to be about a 20% increase compared to comparably sized flat panel monitors. So you can use that as an estimate of the increase in cost relative to, uh, to alternative flat panel solutions. So in terms of the applications, we're a dual use technology, meaning we have applications in both the defense and commercial sectors. So in defense, flight simulation and training, we partnered with Lockheed Martin to develop an all-in-one simulator using their prepared software and our display and some peripherals uh, for a bundled solution. It's also used for command and control and ISR where you need to find very fine details in a very vast landscape of data. And that tracks to some of the use cases we'll, we'll talk about here. Uh, but first, I wanted to talk about patient care and our displays being ideal for nursing administration. So this idea of a virtual ICU, similar to control rooms in the defense space, we can offer a 20x reduction in size, weight, and power compared to multi-monitor setups and enhance comfort over prolonged use. Uh, with image review, our, our displays are ideal for physician comfort, efficiency, and effectiveness. So diagnostic imaging and radiology, um, our displays allow for extended review sessions because of that, that eye comfort. Uh, because we enhance the brightness of the image, we're able to get doctors out of the dark room and, and view images in standard lighting conditions. Um, with our image magnification and our image in, uh, brightness enhancement, we can increase the probability of detection in the diagnosis. And we also offer volumetric privacy. So this notion 
that it's really meant for one person to view in isolation uh, and not have multiple people seeing the image at the same time. So it's, it gives you some, some privacy that way. Um, Brelion displays are also ideal for enhancing physical uh, uh, physician comfort, efficiency, and effectiveness with respect to procedures. So in endoscopic and laparoscopic procedures, um, we're panel agnostic, meaning we can source any, um, any monitor or panel for our system. Um, the compact size allows us to integrate this, this monitor into the surgical suite uh, with space optimization. And the virtual screen is, again, sculpted in 3D space. So what appears cl or what should appear closer to you does appear closer to you. And what should appear farther away from you does appear farther away from you. So when you're looking at these, uh, these images, it gives you a feeling of 3D, even though it is a monocular depth profile sculpted in 3D space. Next, we'll talk a little bit about Ultra Reality Mini. Um, so Ultra Reality Mini gives you a 40-inch virtual image through a 14-inch aperture and has a number of different applications for space-constrained environments. So one is with respect to the patient experience and recovery, creating a cinematic kind of um, hospital room experience that's immersive and transportive and potentially helpful with pain management uh, as we've seen with, with VR headsets, except you don't have to wear anything on your head. Um, and now I want to talk about some of the future-facing technologies we're working on, some more advanced capabilities um, that I think is very exciting for this audience. So the first is ultra-reality MRI. And this is a concept to enhance the patient experience when, when going into the MRI bore, alleviating claustrophobia with a virtual bore that's 5x larger than a 70-centimeter bore. Uh, so our optical system allows us to create the illusion of having much more space in, this, in the bore and therefore uh, reduce claustrophobia. We also are working on a concept called UR3D or Ultra Reality 3D. And this is for robotic assisted surgery and procedures. Um, so it's glasses free access to both shallow and deep depth or true depth, um, the monocular depth and the stereoscopic depth. Um, and enables enhanced efficacy and accuracy in the surgery. Uh, so we're pretty excited about the potential for this technology in the emerging robotic-assisted surgery realm. And last, um, one of the most recent technologies we rolled out is called UR Extend. Instead of having one monocular depth layer that's far away from you, we have a secondary monocular depth layer that's a little bit closer to you. And those discrete depth layers um, allow you to augment the, the back layer with secondary information. So by way of example, you could have patient images in the background and patient data on the foreground, or just multiplex data in a new dimension. Uh, so very exciting technology that we'll be rolling out uh, next week. So again, a number of different use cases that lever leverage our immersive and virtual display technology. Uh, really is a new age where you don't have to wear headsets or glasses in order to get immersion and to, uh, to take some of these medical applications to the next level. So thank you very much. Well, thanks for that, Michael. That was a really insightful, exciting talk. Um, you know, we had a couple of questions come in from the audience there, but I just want to get on to the, the whole thing about virtual reality, augmented reality, so you know, extended reality, right? You know, there's they're still they're trying to find what applications are suitable for virtual reality or augmented reality and in some cases you know you're not going to have people in a VR headset for extended periods of time so it's a bottleneck but it sounds like what you guys are offering is the complete opposite of that but allows for the same immersive experience is that right exactly so you can use it eight plus hours every day without experiencing fatigue or exhaustion okay um that's really interesting actually so I know someone's asked them, um, can you use this for robotic surgery, i.e. Da Vinci? And I think you mentioned that in your slides. You know, are you doing any development in that space? I mean, if you want to do it for the Da Vinci, I mean, you would essentially just re what, replace that stereoscopic imaging? So with... our, our approach is to actually have a much larger aperture. So you don't need to be in that sort of head, head mounted uh, or, or head sort of space. Um, but yes, that is one of the applications that we're very excited about. Requires 3D, and right mm -hmm. now we offer monocular depth or 2D okay. depth. Um, 
but um, the, the combination of our monocular depth with the stereoscopic depth creates a really compelling new type of solution for robotic assistive procedures. And somebody's wrote up here, so your device doesn't cause nausea or nausea. I don't know if that's the dig at being in VR and getting nauseous in VR. Do you want to maybe comment on that? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the reasons why people get dizzy or nauseated in VR is because of this accommodation virgins mismatch, um, where they're viewing an image that appears to be uh, uh, divorced from the physical plane that their, their mm -hmm. eye is focused on. Um, we don't have that issue because the image you're looking at, it, your eye is actually focused that far away. The, it, it appears to be that far away. And so it is a much more comfortable experience. Also, relaxing the ciliary uh, muscles in your eyes um, by looking farther into the distance uh, is a more comfortable experience and, and less fatiguing. And the last thing I'll mention is for people with presbyopia, um, they don't even have to wear their glasses because we're naturally pushing yeah. the image farther away from them outside of the physical embodiment of the device. I think that's a, another very good point um, you know, for, for um, users that are wearing, wearing glasses. It can be kind of tricky to put on a VR headset, et cetera, right? It's just like, you know, so again, it's another great opportunity for you guys to enter that market with something that's fully immersive. Um, I guess my final question is, you know, you, can you comment on your history? You said it was a spin out of MIT. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? So our founder was, was a research scientist at, at MIT studying Alok imaging, uh, uh, Barmak Keshmet. Okay. And um, he then partnered with Alok, who was at DARPA under the DOD umbrella. Okay. And they came together both with an optical, uh, optics and photonics background um, to create this solution on the display side. So mm -hmm. Uh, no IP transfer, a complete separation of IP. Wow. Um, but that's how the company came to be, and then I joined shortly thereafter. And on that note, I'd like to thank Michael for coming in. I'm, I'm looking forward to experiencing this myself.